beyond intro to computer graphics. What does that do? Answered in the briefest of fashion. You may wish to investigate selections. I've opened up a picture of me at Sterling Castle. If I choose the fuzzy select tool, this selects by a contiguous region. I can click here to get some of the brown wall, hold down the shift key and click to add even more areas to the selection. I can also use the select by color tool. This is not selecting by contiguous regions, but anywhere the color exists. So if I select this dark brown color, it's selecting the brown at the roof, behind me, and on the floor. The sensitivity of both tools can be adjusted with the maximum color difference slider. History. I just did some fuzzy selects. I can put it back to the way it was when I first started the session or any intermediate step along the way with the history tool. Paths. In GIMP, instead of using the scissors tool to play connect the dots to make a selection, if I instead use the paths tool, I can still play a game of connect the dots. But when I'm finished on the paths menu, I can select from the path. By having a saved path, I could always go back to reselect an area that I might need to work on again. Channels. I've opened up the GIMP logo. On the channels bar, we can see how much red, green, and blue are mixed together to create that image. Of course, the alpha channel is the transparency. If I use the fuzzy select tool, also called the magic wand in other applications, I can select just the white background and then using my delete key, remove everything except the logo. Now, if I go to select invert, only the logo is selected. From here, I can select and save to a channel. Again, this is another way to quickly make a selection mask that I can apply later. As with many of the tools I'm demonstrating today, they are beyond the scope of Intro to Computer Graphics, but I at least want to show you what can be done if you'd like to experiment or as the foundation for future activities. Levels. I'm back in my image of Sterling. Now we know that brightness and contrast can adjust how bright or how much contrast is in an image. We know that we can use dodge and burn to lighten up or darken parts of an image. But on the colors tool, we also have levels. Levels is a way to more precisely control brightness and contrast. You might want to pull in this endpoint and pull in this endpoint to match the range within the image and then by adjusting the midpoint you might be able to get a better range for your brightness and contrast than if you were to do it with two separate sliders. Again, this is something you'll just have to investigate further if you're interested. Curves I actually like the curves a little bit better because it allows me to adjust brightness and contrast simultaneously. On the Colors menu, Curves. By dragging this up or down, or left or right, we can adjust the brightness and contrast simultaneously. But we can also add additional points and get some pretty interesting effects. Again, something to just investigate and experiment with.
Filters. GIMP and Photoshop come with many built-in filters. You can blur the entire image. You can distort the image. You can play with light and shadow, or perhaps go to some artistic filters and turn it into a cartoon. Here's a preview of what it might look like. Experiment with some of the filters. Investigate some of the options that go beyond intro to computer graphics. While many of the tools I've shown you have fairly abstract meanings, the threshold is something you can actually use on a regular basis. Let's say we've just scanned a document, and many times when you scan a document, you get shades of gray running across the page. I've made these yellow to better emphasize my point. On the Colors menu, if you choose Threshold, basically all the darks got black and all the light colors went to white, stripping out any shading or artifacts you may have gotten when you scanned your document. But we can also apply the threshold to other images for artistic effects. On the color menu, choose Threshold. And by adjusting the endpoints, you might be able to get some fairly interesting graphic work. The key here is experiment, investigate, and realize there is far more beyond intro to computer graphics.